How's it going, everybody? Happy Friday. We took off a week or so, but we're back. The Friday I want to talk to you guys about today is the one I clearly had the most tumultuous relationship with. Today we're talking about Jason Lives, Friday the 13th, Part 6. Now, this may be a strong statement, but based on the people that I have talked to when it comes to Friday, this film seems to be at least in the top two of the franchise. I have friends, I know people that say that this is their absolute favorite one, and for a long time, I could not get there. Now, I'm going to try to word this out as best I can as we go through this movie to kind of see why I changed my mind on it, so we'll probably figure that out together as I go through this video. Going back to part six, what was my first experience? Well, if you've been keeping score at home with these, you'll know that this was another classic FYE trip to go pick up one of these movies from the Deluxe Edition DVDs. Now, getting these Deluxe Edition DVDs at the time was such a blessing because it was such a great way to be introduced to the movies. I could get these DVDs, there were these great special features and making ofs on them, and I felt like I could get really good on-the-job training, if you will, with learning about these movies with those DVDs. Mind you, I had to get these out of order, like I said, because I would go to get these DVDs at the time, and they were constantly selling. Those Deluxe DVDs were fairly new at the time. They were probably one to two years old at that time at best, so they were going off the shelves pretty frequently. I think I had seen parts 3 and 7 and maybe even 8 before getting to part 6. And as a matter of fact, the one I think I saw right before this was Friday the 13th part 7. And mind you, I had fallen in love with the tone of part 7. It was grim, it was mean. There were some funny characters, but when Jason showed up, holy crap, people were running for their life. And I loved that. So I get home and I pop in part 6. This was not one that my brother joined me with for one reason or another. It was probably just circumstances. But I remember watching part 6. I just remember walking away from part 6 saying, okay, I'm ready to see another one. I didn't necessarily dislike it from the first go around, but I just felt like, okay, this isn't my favorite one, but let's move on. One of the things at the time that I think kind of confused me is the fact that Jason was wearing garden gloves in the film. Why would he stop to put on gloves? It doesn't seem like something his character would do. Little did I know that years later, I think I would start to answer these questions myself rather than looking for an answer to suit my criticism for that movie at the time. I also think seeing this film with another Tommy Jarvis was probably a little jarring to me at that point. You know, when you see those movies and it's three different people playing the same character that could be a little distracting and I think maybe at that point I wasn't accustomed to that happening a lot in movies mind you horror movies kind of have that situation happen a lot with low budget filmmaking and that was something that kind of came with the territory and I just wasn't up to speed with yet but I'll never forget this and even from the start if I could go back and talk to myself after seeing this movie for the first time I think I would still agree when you look at the Friday the 13th series as a whole when you talk about opening scenes I don't think that there is a better opening scene in the entire franchise than Friday the 13th part 6 nothing sets up a movie quite like the opening of Friday part 6 they're showing up to dig up Jason's body. It's a little grim and morbid, but hey, this is Jason we're dealing with. We gotta make sure this sucker's dead and buried. And the idea of him coming out of the grave, getting shocked by electricity when Tommy spears him and then lightning strikes it, it is a great great moment. You know how Jason kind of resurrected the same way in part 8 underwater with electricity? That one doesn't even come close to looking as good as the way it did in part 6. I think that was probably done with optical effects, but man, talk about getting it just right. It is a great looking scene. And I'll never forget the way Jason lunged at one of them when he first comes up and is resurrected. It is a crazy, crazy shot. Freaks me out big time. And then when you see him rise up out of that grave, and then when you see him get hit in the back of the head by Horseshack, turn around and just take his heart out, man. I think even then I would agree that I think the opening of part six is hands down the absolute best. But I think what threw me off with that scene at the time as well is how we zoom into Jason's eye and there's that 007 style title card. I guess I just wasn't expecting that in a Friday the 13th movie. Mind you, I had a lot to learn still when it came to this series. So over the next couple years, I would rank the movies. I think I just had part six somewhere in the middle to a little bit lower range. I certainly still picked it over movies like Jason Goes to Hell or Jason X, maybe even the first Friday the 13th at the time. But it was never one that I would say, oh, this is the one for me. And it was always interesting to me that I would see a lot of fans say, this is just the perfect Friday the 13th movie. They get it. It just gets it right. The tone is right. That sort of thing. I really think as I got a little bit older and I fell in love with the horror comedy genre, because when a horror comedy is done right, meaning you really get the perfect blend of the comedy and the action, it is a subgenre that to me is unbeatable. And I could think of some movies that can really set the tone for what I like, and the biggest would have to be 
The Return of the Living Dead. Now, I'm pretty open saying that that is my all-time favorite horror movie. When I fell in love with that movie, it really opened my eyes to the blueprint of how to work out a movie in that style. So I'll never forget this. I was jogging one day, and I hadn't watched a Friday the 13th movie in quite some time. I think this was right around the pandemic era. And while I was jogging, I think I had the Return of the Living Dead soundtrack playing or something. Maybe SSQ was playing. And I thought about great horror comedies. And then it hit me. I should probably revisit Friday the 13th Part 6. I know that film is clearly in the vein of a horror comedy. Because of my thoughts previously, it wasn't a Friday movie I would go back and watch that often. So I said, you know what, let's go back and watch Part 6. Plus, it's got Tom Matthews in it, who now I'm a giant fan of because of his other work, so maybe I'll get it this time. So I'll never forget, it was a summer day in 2020, and I decided, okay, let's watch Friday the 13th Part 6. I'm not going to binge the movies and work my way up to Part 6. I've now watched Crystal Lake Memories. I've now watched His Name Was Jason. I've watched all the documentaries on those special edition DVDs. I have the knowledge on this series. I understand how we got to this point, who the director was. I had the pleasure of interviewing the director at this point, and I watched Friday the 13th Part 6 with the stereo loud, the lights off, and the doors shut. And that's where I kind of had that moment where I was like, I get this. I really do get this. It's tongue-in-cheek. Director Tom McLaughlin even says, if I have to do this movie and make a Part 6, there's no way in good conscience I could tackle this seriously. It's a part six for God's sakes. This movie really has this feeling of we want you, the audience, to have fun. That's an emotion that I think is really hard to get in horror comedies. I can probably think of just a few movies that do it that well. But at the top of that list would definitely be Friday the 13th part six. Now I get the garden gloves on Jason. He took the stuff from the kids. He's suiting himself up. He's got his hockey mask on. He's ready to go. He's got his belt buckle on. This movie is Jason coming back from the dead as a militant zombie. And a militant zombie may be the proper way to describe this, considering C.J. Graham replaced somebody on this movie who they thought was a little bit overweight, which I guess I kind of get it, but honestly, I kind of like the look of that heavier Jason. But that's neither here or there. C.J. definitely did a great job. He had a military background, and honestly, the way Jason is portrayed, like a soldier almost really works well with this movie. One of my favorite scenes, if not my favorite scene of this movie, is when Tom McLaughlin's, well now ex-wife, driving down this dirt road where the car gets stuck and they see Jason. And then at this point, I don't know how often this was done in horror, but they kind of wink at the audience saying, I've seen enough horror movies to know that if you see a weirdo wearing a mask in the woods, you don't get out the car. And that's something that's interesting. Tom McLaughlin even said that years later, Kevin Williamson called him up and said, hey, Friday the 13th Part 6 was a clear clear inspiration for the kind of humor and dialogue that I was using when I was writing Scream. There is a little bit of schlockiness in this, but it's very, very light. I really think it's just the way Tom Matthews' performance as Tommy comes across here, where he gets put in prison and everything. I would be hooping and hollering a hell of a lot more than he did, because if you didn't see the situation he went through and then you saw him in the prison, I think I might even question his sincerity a little bit. Now, his love interest in the film, the sheriff's daughter, is so cool, and Tom McLaughlin really had a 50s and 60s sensibility. So he wanted her to kind of be that kind of smart, powerful, blonde, you know, chick, and she pulled that off so good. Another thing I love about part six is really the camp setting and seeing all the camp counselors around and they actually bring kids into the camp, which is something I remember wondering about seeing some of the previous entries. Are kids ever going to show up here? It's mighty convenient that Jason seems to kill all these counselors before any kids show up to the camp. And I think that's one thing I really give part six credit for. It's not necessarily that Jason needs to take out kids, but the threat is there. And that's something that I don't think we saw before or since in the series whatsoever. So that's something I definitely applaud Tom McLaughlin for doing, is actually bringing kids to the camp before Jason wipes everybody out. And this is somewhat of a geographical kind of thing, I guess, that I just like, is I'm from the South. I live in Louisiana, and I know what Southern Woods looks like, and I love the fact that Part 6 was filmed down South. Those woods look like my kind of woods. So that's something when I see the movie, it feels a little homey to me, and that's something I really like too. The humor in this film really shines to me with Tom because you've got these small town cops, but there's a point in the movie where the sheriff's kind of deputy gets this gun that has a red laser on it, and you know the whole spiel with him saying, wherever the red dot goes, you bang, and you say to yourself, now this guy probably doesn't see a whole lot of action. Why did he need this? But that's the humor, of course, and that's something that I just think Tom was really smart to do. Now this movie has something that I don't think many other Friday the 13th films has, and that is no nudity. But Darcy DeMoss would have been our girl that would have had 
you know, the shirt off scene or something like that, the way most Fridays do. But because of a contract clause or something not happening, she didn't have to do it. And Tom McLaughlin didn't force her to do it. There's something about her keeping her shirt on in that scene that makes her even more attractive to me. I don't know what it is. I don't know if anybody else can relate to that. I don't know why. But Darcy, you are beautiful. You're still beautiful. And I love you. Now, here's the biggest thing I take away from Friday the 13th Part 6. This is the movie that gave me my love for my favorite rock and roll icon till this very day. I'm talking about the great Alice Cooper. Now, it's not Man Behind the Mask that really sucked me in. It's hearing Hard Rock Summer, which unfortunately was never put on a record or anything. I actually had to buy the Life and Crimes box set, which is the only way on a CD version to have that song. So that movie is the moment I said, oh, Alice Cooper, I know him, but he's the school's out guy. So a little research made me realize that Alice has been through every era of rock and put out some of the best records in the rock and roll genre of all time. And that is something I can never, ever thank Friday the 13th Part 6 enough for, is giving me my love for the king of rock, Alice Cooper. So guys, I guess years later, after just watching more horror movies and expanding my horizons with the genre and finding out what I really like in the genre, I just changed my mind on the film. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think as you get older and you start to experiment more with watching different movies and realizing what you like and what you don't like, it can change your perception on a movie that you hadn't seen for quite some time. And the truth is, if you were going to count how many times in my life I've seen Part 6, it probably is the lowest amount out of any Friday. It's changing now, of course, because I'm watching the film more. But truthfully, up until 2020, I had probably only seen Friday Part 6... I'd say maybe five times. It could even be four. I'm not sure. I just know it was my least watched Friday film. But for some reason, I'll always remember that day jogging, listening to the Return of the Living Dead soundtrack and thinking to myself, you know what? I think I should probably really love Friday the 13th Part 6. It has all the beats and hits of the kind of stuff I love. So yes, as time goes on, Friday the 13th Part 6 creeps higher and higher and higher of one of my favorite Friday the 13th movies. I think this is also the easiest Jason Friday the 13th movie to throw on without any sort of marathon. Because for one reason or another, I just feel Part 6 feels so incredibly contained. Part 6 seems like a one-stop shop, and it's a movie that I just love. It makes me think of the color blue. It makes makes me think of Alice Cooper. It makes me think of C.J. Graham's awesome militant Jason performance, who I've really grown to love. And it makes me think of Tom McLaughlin coming in and being the perfect guy for the job to say, okay, this is the sixth one. Let's have some fun. So guys, Friday the 13th Part 6 is a fan favorite for a lot of reasons, and quite frankly, a lot of great reasons. I'd love to know your story with Friday the 13th Part 6. Is this a Friday the 13th movie you might have changed your mind on over the years? Or is there any Friday the 13th movie that you've changed your mind on over the years? This is one of the most important, if not the most important, Friday the 13th films in the entire series. It really needed to succeed after Part 5. They needed to get people's butts back in the seats to see Jason, and the word of mouth definitely creeped this movie up to have a respectable box office. So cheers to Friday the 13th Part 6, cheers to Alice Cooper, cheers to C.J. Graham, cheers to Tom Matthews, cheers to Tom McLaughlin, cheers to you. So I don't know what you're doing this weekend, but I guarantee you, you're going to think about watching Part 6, and you're going to have a damn good time. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see y'all next time. Huge giant thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, this would not be possible. To get behind the scenes photos, videos, music, private live streams, and much more, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you to my patrons.